Hi students, this is AJ sir. Let's study Math 10th Standard ICSC Exercise 24E Measures of Central Tendency Applications. Exercise 24E Cancel sums 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 12, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Let's start with the seventh sum. The cancel sums are of the same type as 24 A, B, C, D. Here some data is given, tabulated grouped data. We have to find the median first of all using an ogive. So we make a table. Remember the upper class limit will be the x. We have to find the cumulative frequency which increases down the group. These are the points to be plotted. N value is 120. So the 60th term will be the median, which we have to find with the help of the ogive. Looking at the table, we know that the 60th term is somewhere here. So it would be between 40 and 50, but we need an exact value using the ogive. So, this is the ogive. The x-axis will have marks mentioned that, and the y-axis will have the cumulative frequency, CF, which is the number of students cumulative frequency. You need to remember what comes on the x and y-axis. Any confusion there would result in loss of marks because of wrong answers. Because when we find the median, we always start from the y-axis, the 60th term, and we get the answer on the x-axis. So remember that the median answer is on the x-axis, which comes out to be 43. You see, 41, 42, 43. And having plotted the points, make sure that the graph starts from one box before this. So in this case, it is the origin, which is fair enough, no kink here. Now, Roman number two says, find the number of students who obtained more than 75% marks in the test. Here, the marks was of 100. The test was of 100 marks. So 75% would be 75 marks, of course. So here they have asked for the number of students who obtained more than that. So since they are asking for the number of students, we will get the answer from the y-axis now. And we will have to start from the x-axis. 75% marks means 75 marks in this sum. So we draw a line here till it intersects the graph. And from where it intersects, we draw a line, straight line, to the y-axis. It cuts at 110. What does it mean? It means that the first 110 students, out of 120 students, got less than 75 marks. And the remaining students, that is 10 students, got more than 75% marks, that is between 75 and 100. So the question was, how many students got more than 75% marks? So the answer is 10. If the question was, how many students got less than 75% marks? Then it would have been 110. But what if the total marks was not 100? What if it was uh, 200? Then 75% of 200 would have been 150. So we would have started off at 150. Remember that. So the answer for Roman number 2 is 10. Roman number 3. Number of students who did not pass if the pass percentage was 40. If the pass percentage is 40, that means passing marks is also 40. Because it's a 100 marks paper. So 40% of 100 is 40. So again, we'll have to start from the x-axis. And since they are, they've asked number of students, we'll get the answer from the y-axis. So at 40, draw a line. 
don't confuse it with the median line okay remember the median line started from the y axis and we got the answer in the x axis but here it's different so you have to be very careful about deciding from where to start the line so 40 marks and i got it to 52 that means the first 52 students got less than 40 marks and the remaining students how much is remaining i guess it's 68 students are remaining isn't it they got more than 40 marks so the question is how many of them failed so the answer is 52 let me change the question how many of them passed well 68 passed because they got more than 40 marks or equal to 40 marks and Roman number three is find the lower quartile well lower quartile is always one-fourth of the data so out of 120 students one-fourth will be the first 30 students so the 30th term has to be found out so 30th term so again will we start from the x-axis or y-axis can you recall for quartiles from where do we start it's like the median so we start from the y-axis so we start from the y-axis 30 and incidentally the answer is again 30 so the first 30 students got the highest marks up to 30 marks and don't forget to mention graph on graph paper next let's do the tenth sum in the tenth sum some data is given and one unknown variable is there f but the mean is given as 52 so we don't need a graph for this sum we make a table uh, here it's mean by the way so for mean the class mark is the mid value between 10 and 20 between 20 and 30 remember that not the upper class limit that was for drawing an ogive so we find the summation of f we find the summation of fx f is the unknown variable if you remember 35 f cannot be added and the mean formula is yeah this is mean is equal to summation of fx upon summation of f this is a normal method mean is already given these values substitute cross multiply rearrange the terms and get the value of f which is 4 next the 13th sum again some tabulated grouped data is given so we'll draw an ogive to find the median marks uh, there are totally 200 students by the way so the table here points to be plotted remember the x value is the upper class limit here 10 and cumulative frequency is required here not fx here are the points to be plotted and we should write graph or graph paper here and the graph looks something like this. Make sure you write the exercise number and the question number on top. Marks are on the x-axis. Students are on the y-axis. The cumulative frequency that is. Now the total was 200. So the 100th term will give us the median. We'll start from the y-axis, the 100th term. And the median comes out to be 57 out here, 57. Notice the scale which I have taken, 0 to 20, 20 to 40. Because if I would have taken 0, 10, 20, 30, then I would not have been able to fit 200 in this graph itself. Now Roman number 2 is number of students who failed if the minimum marks required to pass is 40 okay 40 so we'll have to start from the x-axis now and we'll get the answer from the y-axis so draw a line from 40 wherever it cuts the graph interestingly it is similar to the point plotted that's fine it may not have been by the way draw a line so what is the value of this be careful about the scale. I guess it's uh, 40, 42, 44, 46. So 46 students failed who got less than 40 marks and the rest of them passed.
Next question is problem number three. If scoring 85 and more is considered as grade one, say distinction, then how many students got grade one? 85 and more. So again, we'll start from the x-axis. 85 is out here. 85 and it cuts exactly at 188, isn't it? 180, 82, 84, 86, 88. Then the next one would have been 190, by the way. So I'm getting 188. One box difference is allowed. So how many of them got grade 1? The top portion, isn't it? They got more than 85 marks. So that's 200 minus 188, which is 12 students. That's how we solve this sum. Now while plotting, there were some numbers which might have confused you, like 151. Now how do you plot that? Because here we've got 140, we've got 160, so 150 is in the middle. And then we have 152, so 151 will be in the middle. So that's okay, it doesn't have to be like absolutely spot on. It'll be between 150 and 152, somewhere here, that's 151. And now, the 17th sum. The numbers are given. Fortunately, it's already in ascending order. And it's mentioned that the mean is equal to the median. Find the value of x. Okay, let's calculate the mean first. Mean is summation of all values upon number of quantities. There are only six quantities. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the mean comes out to be 49 plus x upon 6. Now, how about median? Well, we want the middle term, right? So, but there are even number of quantities. So we'll go for the... third and the fourth values both. Both of them are in the middle with two on the left and two on the right remaining. And we'll have to take an average of this, which comes out to be 11. What is interesting is that while calculating median, the value of this doesn't matter. If this was 16 or 19 or 1000, the median would still be 11. That's why median is so different from mean. Now they've said that mean and median are equal for this particular sum, it's coincidence. So if they are equal, that means this is equal to 11. Cross multiply and get the value of x. Hi students, if you found this video useful, press the like button. Also to enroll for my online lectures or online test series, email me or message me on Instagram. Check the description for more information.